Good morning, guys. This is Dr. Lee with another episode of Dermpath Made It Easy. So today we're going to talk about fibrofolliculomas. That's this diagnosis. Um, these lesions are rarely, rarely solitary. Um, usually they're in a uh, grouped up multiple uh, papules and bumps on the skin. They're usually skin colored, as you can see here. Here you see some of the neck, and they can often be numerous. Um, when they are numerous, the one thing we always think about in association with this disorder is <clears throat> Bert Hogg Dubé syndrome, which is a syndrome uh, that has the mutation in the FLCN, um, FLCN gene. And individuals with, with uh, Bert Hogg Dubé have multiple benign skin tumors, including this lesion, fibrofolliculoma. Uh, the trichodiscoma, and also numerous uh, skin tags, as well as uh, a variety of different benign and malignant uh, kidney tumors, and also uh, lung cysts that often ends in pneumothorax. So that's Bert Hogg Dubé syndrome. <clears throat> let's let's take a look at um, the lesion now. Uh, so trichodiscoma is a hamartomatous growth of uh, portions of the outer root sheath as well as the fibrous orbs surrounding the hair follicle, the perifollicular um, fibrous tissue. And this is the typical appearance that we see. Actually, usually there's a, a little bit more obvious, but when you cut into this lesion more, there will be a cystic center here and, in which um, either, you know, keratinaceous debris or... Uh, or occasionally a hair follicle may be. But what we see here is very typical. So you, you can see from a low power, you have this sort of uh, well-circumscribed fib fibrous area in here. And within that fibrous area, you can see some areas here that may be a little bit more pale. So the, the fibrous areas, um, and as well as you, you have this sort of hair follicle tumor with these very, very thin kind of anastomosin cords or net-like cords, they're usually, you know, two to four cell layers thick here. So this is a typical pattern. And most of them kind of reconnect back up with this central thing right here. Again, if you cut more into this, you'll probably, we would probably see a central sort of like cystic structure. <clears throat> so there's very few lesions that actually do this where, you know, you have this net-like appearance here, a very thin cord-like cord cells. And, you know, you can see here, this is probably outer root sheath dif differentiation. Um, and here, you know, this is some of that mucinous uh, and fibrotic uh, stroma surrounding this lesion. And oftentimes you can see some, you know, very immature or poorly formed hairs and sort of primitive hair follicle elements. So um, this lesion is sort of con uh, confused, or at least in the past was confused with another similar lesion called the trichodiscoma. And in the trichodiscoma, you, you didn't have... We don't have we don't see this much of the epithelial cells, and instead we just see the fibrous orb. So before uh, before uh, when it was first described, we thought these were two different entities. But what it probably actually is is depending on what section that you're in within the tissue. If you're on one opposite end of the section, you may not even see the epithelial cords. So again, from low power, this is the keys to the diagnosis are a dermal based fairly well circumscribed nodule composed of epithelial uh, epithelium from the follicular infundibulum with this anastomosing or net-like uh, arrangement of these things. Usually, you know, you'll have one area that comes out and then one area that goes back in. Um, these are hamartomatous growths or uh, malformations, really. And it's, aside from these anastomosing uh, epithelial cords, we see out in the periphery, you see fibrosis, which is this, you know, sort of brightly pink um, area around here with uh, variable amounts of mucinous deposits, which is this pale stuff in between. Um, usually, in, if, if an appropriate cut section was made, you can see a central kind of opening. I'm just going to show you a couple more uh, examples here. So this is just taken from Google, and you can see here that you, you, you definitely can make out this sort of central uh, infundibular portion of the hair follicle, and oftentimes it could become be uh, cystic. 
and you have anastomosing cords, and here's that fibromucinous orb that's surrounding the hair follicle. Um, so this is an example of a trichodiscoma where you don't have those anastomosing cords, and instead you just have this fairly well circumscribed, and also out here too, well circumscribed area of fibrosis and uh, mucin deposits. So I saw that on some of the uh, answer response, I saw there was some confusion with trichoepithelioma. And in some presentations, it can look different. But remember, what we're seeing in trichoepithelioma, these things are going to look very blue, like basaloid cells. In fact, the, the most common thing to confuse it with is, um, is a basal cell carcinoma. Let's take another look here. You can see variable patterns. And I guess there are, these actually may be eccrine ducts, but you can see very good follicular differentiation. And in general, it's multiple, you know, variable, variably sized nodules and micronodular arrangements. And here you can have sort of a cribiform like pattern or adenoidal pattern. Um, here's another example. These are all from pathology outlines, um, examples of sort of trico app and this thing actually looks quite basal almost but you do see some follicular differentiation in parts like there and this little papillary mesenchymal body here's a another um, path presenter uh, slide library image of a trichoepithelioma, and you can see that this is a much larger nodule. There's no anastomosing cords but definitely follicular differentiation in this tumor um, here, you know, very well defined out papillary mesenchymal bodies. Um, and the interesting thing is the actual clefting on trichoaps are actually quite similar to the fibrofolliculum in the sense that it's not clefting around each individual tumor island, but it's actually around the entire fibrous orb. So if you come back to our example here, you can see that it's falling away along this outside. Okay, guys, um, I hope I covered everything. This is a, a difficult topic and one that frequently confuses people. That, but the board where the answers here are bird hog dubay, multiple <clears throat> fibrofolliculomas, trichodiscomas, associated renal cell tumors, and pulmonary pneumothorax. Um, FLCN is the gene. Thanks again, guys. If, you, if this has helped you, please like, subscribe, and share with other people that you th may think that would find this useful. Have a good night. Thank you.